This is Eating Crow with Pete Durand. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Eating Crow podcast. I'm very grateful to have ABS, otherwise known as Alex B. Sheridan, LinkedIn marketing video savant. Have you heard that one yet? No, I haven't. That's interesting. It's a high bit of praise for me. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. My See, grammar, the spelling is probably third grade level, so that's okay. By the way, stay in your lane. Stay yeah, in your lane, brother. Yeah. Right? That's a big word. So I, I think a lot of people that get you on their podcast, and I've seen you on several of their interviews, want to talk about all your creative thought process, which is remarkable, honestly. I've seen two or three other people even come close to what you're trying to do. Uh, and it's a gift. You didn't wake up one morning and just realize, I'm going to make videos. Maybe you did. I don't know. Did you? Uh, it's, it was a process. It's, it's a process. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to drill into kind of what got you there, right? What you did in college. You're a Midwest guy. I'm a Midwest guy. It's, there's, there's a good thing there. And I want to find out when you decided to jump the shark and say, all right, I'm in. You know, and now you're building a business. Yeah. What's that like? How are you going to scale it? So we're going to, we're going to approach this from the fact that you are a fresh entrepreneur. You're in a leadership role. It might just be you right now, but you're going to be, you have to add people to scale this the right way. Well, and you're leading, leading clients, leading teams that are holding all these boot camps and stuff like that. So there's always the leadership element for sure. And my guess is your business model is evolving daily. Weekly. <laughs> Not quite <laughs> daily yet. Quite Good. Daily. So Alex, tell, you know, tell us what it is you do. Yeah. And, and then describe it to the audience because some of them might not even know what this is. Yeah, like my parents. Um, so <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm founder of a company called Impacts. We're a social media marketing company. And we obviously focused on LinkedIn video. And basically what I do is I help, I transform founders, executives, CEOs into revenue generating content creators. So there's two different types of ways that I work with people. One is I put them through my five-week LinkedIn video boot camp where I teach you everything, I give you everything, it's a step-by-step hand-holding, and it's a process that I take you to transform you on the other side, so that okay. we can come out of this thing rocking and rolling. The second kind of way that I would work with somebody is, is more through a company where I'm an extension of their business and really in-depth involved in their company in terms of strategy, video production, um, that kind of stuff. When you deal with an individual, let's say a CEO at an organization, are they doing the work or is somebody helping them? Well, it depends. I mean, if it's a if it's a smaller company or if it's like a solopreneur kind of thing, mm -hmm. heavy, heavily involved. Sure. Uh, usually, they're putting out the content. They're coming up with ideas a lot of times. But if it's a now, I'm starting to work with bigger companies where they're very successful, multi million dollar companies, and their CEO just doesn't have time to do all the different things. So they got a brand manager and marketing manager, and so it's a different dynamic because you're working with a team now. And, and there's different, you know, egos at stake and that kind of stuff and political landscapes that are, you have to be aware of, which oh, yeah. thankful that I, grateful that I came from a, you know, the corporate background. So I understand that, but it's different than dealing with one person where, you know, you're talking about their business, you're helping them through content strategy, production, that kind of stuff versus working with a team where you have to understand this person's role is this, this person's role is this. I don't want to make sure I don't step on this person's toes make sure that I'm not, I don't feel like I'm imposing because they already have a good thing going on here. Right. So you have to, that's where the emotional intelligence I feel like really comes into play when you're working with these teams because everyone's been great so far that I've worked with, but there's always that understanding of where people are at, how they feel and the, the roles that they have. And you have, just have to kind of watch that stuff. That leads to two questions. When you see your business, and obviously it's evolved over the past eight months, do you see it headed down that path where you start doing work with more bigger corporations or more individuals? Where do you see the, where do you see the upside? Bigger companies for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they need the help in terms of the hands-on and, and they have funds. They have the, they want to make the investment a lot of times mm -hmm. than what you're doing. So it's part of, they've already got a budget, right? Where a lot of individuals, they're kind of carving out something to, to make it fit in their budget where these companies are just blasting out money and towards marketing link whatever they're trying to do and if it's not effective it's very easy to say let's just take this money we're spending here it's not really doing much for us let's give it to alex and let's have him you know grow our brand and build build a business from a social media perspective and you're there happy to accept those funds happy to accept them yeah i'm, I'm curious about this because your content is unusual for linkedin yeah when you're i'm i'm 
I'm a CEO, right? I've, I've been there. And I'm imagining my marketing department saying, we'd like you to do this. And it's, you know, a rap battle <laughs> or the secret, you know, the super secret, you know, area 51 type thing. Are, are you moving that, are you moving these companies down that path or are they, they taking a different approach? No, I mean, one thing that I don't try to do is try to put something inside of somebody or someone that's not already there. What I try yeah. to do is take out what's already in there and unleash that creative, unleash that potential. It's kind of my tagline. And so, um, so no, I mean, some people that I work with, they come to me because they want that uber creative stuff and they want to start doing that. And that's fine as long as that's them. Some people come to me and they'll flat out tell me, dude, your stuff's awesome, but I'm not trying to do that stuff but I do want to stand out in our industry. And I sure. do realize that creating a unique brand that is completely different from everyone else, there's something special about that. You stand out. And so it's, 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 you can do that really in a lot of different ways. There's not one, I, I do it a specific way. That's, that's for me. It's mm -hmm. my personality. It's my style. It's what comes natural. But I, what I try to teach people is you've just got to find a way. And that's what I help people do to stand out from the masses and it's bringing value, but it's also, you know, it's also creating a tension where you're, you're just seen as different than everyone else. So how often are you building a brand for the company or actually for the individual, the CEO or the marketing person? What's the, what's the trade-off in doing either one? Right now it's mostly, it's probably 70, 30 bootcamp, 70, 30% companies, but okay. that's shifting. I mean, you got to think I've only been doing this full time now. I was a side hustle for a long time, mm -hmm. full time for two months. Maybe sure. a little bit longer. So it's, it's very rapidly uh, picking up and, and moving towards the comp company side or what a company may say to me is like, I just got off the phone early before this and he's got three or four people in his company, including himself, that they want to all be part of the boot camp. And then once they learn it, once they get all the tools and skills they need, then they say, well, if we need you, we'll probably bring you in on a monthly basis, monthly retainer after that to do, to help us with strategy or video, whatever it is. But they want their people to know the basics, the fundamentals, so that they could do a lot of it on their own. Um, other companies, you know, other people want it to learn it all and completely do it on their own. And some companies, want, they don't want to do much at all. And they want you to kind of run the show for them. So it's whatever people need. How, much, yeah. how much do you get into uh, actual marketing strategy? In these in these discussions, I had a a lengthy debate with our marketing team about outbound email marketing versus organic content and value on a platform like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I have my opinions. I'm living in one or the other. They both produce they don't they both produce a result. Yeah. But I I, I think organic long term relationships are built in a platform like LinkedIn where you provide something of value. All your videos, whether they're humorous or not and entertaining, there's always something of value. You're giving something away Yes. that I go, you know, I've actually watched them videos and I pause and I go around, what do you say there? Okay, I got to write that down. <laughs> I don't do that in an email. Yeah, right. Right, I got to make an effort. I get an attachment or something, I'm going to go read it. But in, in your content, there's always something there to share. So when you're debating with a corporation, how, how far in are you going in the marketing strategy? It depends, you know. Some companies are very well set up. They know exactly who they are. They've got a brand strategy. They've got their leader makes good content. Maybe they just need help making it pop more, making it stand out, making okay. it more creative. Their videos don't look that great. They're not sure how to piece together some of the content, but the, the foundation is there. And so then it's kind of coming in and making some changes. Other companies literally don't have a brand at all. Sure. You know, you have a logo and that's it. And, and that's not a brand. The brand isn't a logo. It's not a tagline. It's who a company is. It's what they live and it's what they have internally, but it's what they portray externally. And so um, it varies. Yeah, it varies. When you're thinking about creating a video for, let's just say a cabinet maker, and they want to stand out as the best cabinet maker, either in their town or their region or whatever it would be, what would your advice be to the marketing team or the, or the, well, I'll just call it, it could be a solo entrepreneur. Cabinet maker is not necessarily a big yeah. building. What do they got to do to separate themselves to get people to think of that? If I'm going to make cabinets or buy cabinets, that's my company. What are you telling them? Well, the first thing you want to do is figure out, obviously you're going through your brand. Who is your, what is your brand, your strategy, that kind of stuff. So I'd want to learn that first. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and very quickly, I'd move on to who is the target audience? Sure. You know, who are we trying to target? Because obviously all the content funnels back to who the audience is. 
-hmm. But when you're talking about cabinets, I would definitely have some content that's probably on the more entertaining, funny side, you know, the yep. about cabinets that would stand out. But I think you're also going to have to put out content that's a little bit broader than just cabinets, right? Sure. And that's what's cool about LinkedIn is you could talk about life lessons. I would talk about being in business, mm -hmm. what makes you successful versus not successful. Just being an entrepreneur would be great content for that cabinet maker. You know, so they're not always talking about, hey, here's three different types of cabinets that you want. Because how many, how many times are people picking up cabinets, you know, but unless you can find a way to target somebody where, you know, and Facebook ads, who knows? Well, target Facebook might be the better place for that if they're going <laughs> yeah, to see, exactly. right? Versus well, LinkedIn, which is B2B, right? You can, you know, you could target people that are interested in buying cabinets or have looked at buying cabinets. I mean, you, you definitely could do that. But if you're talking about an organic content approach, I would make it, the trick is to make it known what you do. So my profile will be optimized completely for cabinets, what I do. I would have some some videos that are entertaining. Like I have clients that do sell copy or copier machines and shit, you know? So it's like, what I teach them is you need that niche content, but make it entertaining so people know what you do, but you're still providing value. And then also speak about some other things that are gonna relate to everyone so that you can kind of scale. But when people think of, con when they, people think of cabinets, they know somebody that does that. Right. And we, we both know somebody that has made a killer set of videos on selling copiers. Yes. Matthew, yes, I mean, Matthew's remarkable, Crushing right? Incredibly it. talented. Like I said, dude, if you were selling root canals, I would buy one from you. Yeah, dude. His content is so good. <laughs> you know, he's one of the people that pops into my head when I think about creative content on a topic, but he's setting himself apart. Mm -hmm. and if you are in the cop anywhere in the country, that is your copier guy. Yeah. Like I want to do business with that company, period. And would never have imagined copiers. You know, it's funny. I'm talking to another group of people who are in similar industries and they notice that and they see that and they say, wow, we need to start because they realize the power of if this guy separates himself from everyone else. And it's the same in any industry. The yes. staff and recruiting industry right now, I'm big on because I came from an industry. Yeah. Those people, especially the bigger companies, none, nobody's doing anything with content, LinkedIn, aside from their corporate articles and stuff. And I'm like the person that comes along and just and just stays consistent and produces quality content. They're going to dominate. And you know, I'll have to say both Matthew and you are very talented, right? It this it's you're right. You got to you've got to identify your niche and stay in your lane. I if I was producing the videos you're producing, it would be horrid, right? I've got to identify what my niche is, and my value prop, and I've got to come up with my own brand. That's part of it. Yeah. And it, it, it it will be funny, but it's not going to be on the same level you're doing, partly because I, have a, I still have a full-time gig. So this for me is a passion and a hobby, and I can't, I can't spend that amount of time. Partly, I'm just not that funny. So, um, you know, when you and Matthew produce something, it's actually, I mean, it's bloody entertaining. Yeah. It is hilarious. But I'm amazed when he finishes it. I'm like, there's a point there, right? There's, there's a message yeah. through that whole video that he, you, you both sat down and said, this is the message, this is the audience, this is what it has to resonate with. And the reason there, that is, is because I, I always teach with all my clients because I've learned this the hard way. The message has to, and the, the impact has to come first before the creative. Because absolutely you now hyper creative videos, that's really, you're, you just become this content person that makes people laugh or entertain. Mm -hmm. There has to be a solid message. There has to be an impact that you're trying to make. That always should come first. And then you find a way to creatively wrap that up into a piece of content. It's interesting you say that. So I, my startup company in, in the healthcare space, uh, I had, we produced probably 300 videos. I had a full video production crew. It was insane. I learned a lot about making videos and, and I was in most of them. We did one that I didn't want to be in. And I had a friend who had his leg amputated for cancer, but he was run walking within weeks and was working out and swimming, no excuse. I mean, he was full on in. And to me, this is, I, I used to deal with people who would make an excuse to do anything, right? Yeah. They've got all, all their digits in their limbs and they're still making excuses. Oh, yeah. So we made a video called Two Choices. And the choices were, you could choose what you eat every day and you could choose what you do with your time. And we gave examples of people choosing poorly in the video and people choosing correctly. And in every one of the scenes, the first scene is somebody wakes up at 5.30, hits the snooze and goes back to bed. This guy, Pete, wakes up, gets out of bed, slips on his artificial leg and goes to work out, right? What he's eating, what he's doing through the whole video. To this day, I produced this video 10 years ago. When I watch it, I still get a tear in my eye. I'm not kidding you. I watch this video. When I showed it to him, he broke down crying. His family was. I mean, that, and by the way, that was what we, we wanted people to watch and to be a little punched in the mouth. 
And I just wrote the script and the storyboard and gave it to my video team. They came back and showed it to me. That's powerful. And that's, that's the power of video. It can captivate you like that text reading something. Just, it just doesn't elicit that emotion. It does. And music and audio have such a big part of it. I learned from my, my oh, oh. audio. The soundtracks just 100%. drive all the emotion, right? 100%. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm looking at, at you in your – I see your studio behind you. Uh, as you grow the business, how do you scale you? How so? You know, you're, you're the creative engine, you're the content person. At some point when you can't do it all in an 80 hour week, mm -hmm. when you think about growing your business, what's the next resource you add? Yeah. I mean, there's certain things that I think naturally like video editing, I do sometimes outsource. I have somebody that, that I, that will do certain things for me. Most of the time I'm doing it me, but I have a guy that I can go to for certain things. Good. Um, assistant, a virtual assistant. I could see that being next very soon down the line where they're just mm -hmm. taking care of the day just the day-to-day the -day stuff that just, you don't, they don't really make you any money or move the business forward. It's just task that you have to knock sure. out. So that's what I think about is how do I get rid of or outsource, you know, the things that aren't moving the business forward. And so I think it's going to be that. And I also think probably by this, probably by, you know, it's so funny because I don't know if this thing could just take off. Like it just, you never know. But um, I think probably by the end of the year, I'll be looking at potentially hiring somebody to run these boot camps, these video boot camps. Sure. Because I think at some point they do require a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, mostly because I just want to put in that kind of work because I love that team and I care about them and I want them to get good results. And, um, and I want to create raving fans and I, and, and I want them all to succeed, but it takes a lot of your time and energy and that kind of stuff. So if I had someone that was in charge of running it and then acquiring or working with the new clients coming into it, just running with the boot camp program, and then I can go off and do my, the, you know, the deals with the company, that kind of stuff. But then, yeah, but then beyond that, there's going to be hiring because, you know, a company could call me right now and say, we need X, Y, and Z work. And I could be like, I can't do that without somebody else. And so I'm, sure. I'm ready. To, I'm not afraid to, to pull the trigger on that one. It's probably getting close. Yeah, you're ready to lean in. And it's good. You're thinking about the fact that you still need to be the creative engine behind this, but the execution stuff after the stuff is shot in the basic editing and posting and, and the boot camp should be something. I'm sure it'll continually evolve, but it's lather, rinse, repeat, right? You set up the modules, they run the training, keep an yeah, eye on them. There's some one on ones involved. There's some live live sessions once a week, and you know, there's touch points throughout the week. So it's it's decently, but it's 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 set up to where there are video modules, and there's not you're not from ground zero working with every single person. There's a system in place. So do you see yourself getting the business in, to a point where you can make money while you sleep? Hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, how would you do that? How do you evolve the business to uh, a recurring revenue stream? What does that look like? Well, there's a couple ways. One, if I got, if I hired somebody to do the boot camp, acquire new customers and run the boot camp, there's that right there. Bingo. Right? Yep. So, yep. Yep. So that's one, one avenue. I could go take a vacation and this person's running with the boot camp and, and uh, making money while I'm, you know, chilling wherever I'm at. Um, Let's see how that, I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see how that works out for you as an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't think I can delegate? <laughs> it's not delegating. It's just that as the business is growing and you're expanding, yeah. those catch your breath moments are few and far between. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Trust yeah. me. I'm, I've had one day off in, uh, in six months. Yeah. And the one day I took off, I was like depressed about it because I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> it's really weird, man. I'm actually like trying to figure out ways to take time off and not feel weird about it because all I've been doing is just grinding. I mean, I've got two little ones, but when I'm not with them, like I'm just working all the time, you know, it so is, it, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge as your little ones grow up. How old are they now? They're six and four. Yeah. You're, uh, you're getting into the sweet spot now. And, but you know what, if they see you doing something you love, they'll approach work differently. Oh, it's, I, that's what I hope so. And I, I just want them to, people are like, you want them to do what you do? I'm like, no, I want them to do whatever makes them happy. But, but on the flip side, I don't have an issue when it comes to, when they're with me, like I try to be in the moment present with, does that mean I don't Shut do down. playing games? Sure, I'll do that. But for the most part, like they're with me all last weekend and we had a blast the entire weekend. But as soon as I left, I was at Starbucks 10 minutes later working, you know, I'm putting four or five hours worth of work. And so it just is what it is. Like I'm just, you're trying to build something the first couple of years or they take a lot of work. I think people yeah. don't realize, I think people see people you know, it's kind of like if you've ever done boxing 
you see people in the ring and you're like, that doesn't seem that hard. Like you get in there, I'll throw some punches and dance. Mm-hmm. And then you get in there where someone knows what they're doing. You're like, holy, this is a totally different game than I thought. Like this is way more to the, it, way the, harder. The, the level of training is obscene. It's ridiculous. And that's the same way with entrepreneurship and starting your business. You may I, I think that people see the videos and they see them like, oh, that seems cool and awesome to make. They have no freaking clue what it takes to keep this up for this long a time and the creativeness and then running a business and having a side hustle on kids. They have no clue how hard it is and how much they work. They don't, they, they I, don't, I don't at all. I talk about it sometimes because I'm afraid I'm like going to discourage people because I'm like, you know, you know but I do talk about it because I want people to see the real stuff. I have my vlog now on YouTube and I show some of this stuff and I'm like, you know, people say they want shit, but whether or not they're willing to go do the things to get what they want, that's where the real, that's the real question. So I know so many people who the way I describe it is they're always getting ready to get ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to start right. tomorrow. I, got, I put the spreadsheet together. Oh, yeah. People I'm going to call, I'm going to call them. They're in the spreadsheet. Hey, and they, they Monday, hey, Monday, Peter, I mean, Monday, I'm going. I'm What's killing Monday? Monday. I'm killing it Monday. And they don't recognize that on Saturday when it was beautiful here, I spent 10 hours either editing video or inviting people to the next podcast or researching yeah. the next podcast or learning three or four new tools. Uh, you know, and, and then by the way, getting out on LinkedIn and engaging yep. in a evaluated process takes a heck of a lot of time. hundred percent. This is where people just, I think really need to be honest with themselves and self reflect and say, mm-hmm. what do I really want out of this one life that I get? I think that's where people get hung up in the, the, the glamour of it. They see it and they're like, that seems really cool. It's like, cool, but you don't see the fucking lonely nights where I'm sitting here for seven hours by myself until midnight, putting in work that I don't yeah. want to do. You don't yeah. see this. I don't want to make somebody you know, make these videos all the time. Yeah. I'd love to have a week off. It'd be great to have just a week off. Can't do it right now. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to be, but I love what I do. And for me, the work ethic thing has always been there since I was 14, you know, little kid. Yeah. Even, even in my corporate job, I got to the office at 5.30 in the morning. People thought I was a psycho. Yeah. And I didn't leave three. Like I was there until 5.36, 7 o'clock. Yeah. Like I've always been like really hard charging. I, I Work makes me happy. I found something I love to do. So for me, it fits in. Now, I still need to find some type of balance, of course. But, it's, but it fits into my personality, into how I, how I roll. Or I, I, I don't push this upon people because I know for 90% of people, it really doesn't fit that. They, you, and they're like, oh, you work from home. What's it like? How? Like some of my buddies are like, how do you not day drink during the day? And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, that doesn't even cross my mind because they just see it as something that's cool. But that's they don't right. realize everything that went into it. I've had three beers before we started this podcast. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my best right now. I'm, my, I'm living my best life. You know, it, it's, uh, you, you have to be wired for it, as you said. No question about it. Uh, you you also have to enjoy that process. There are things like you said that you got to do that you don't like, but if you've, if that's the last thing that gets it across the line, it, one of my very first startups, uh, it was 12 people. We were just getting ready to sign a huge contract with Motorola, great Chicago based company, a huge contract. I was brought in to run this company and get it done. So they were coming for their first big visit to our office and we had a small office. So, uh, I brought my, at the time, my five-year-old with me to the office. And I cleaned the whole office. I scrubbed the toilets in the men's room, the women's room, the whole office. For three years, he thought that's what I did. No way. His, what, what, what is your daddy? My dad cleans toilets. <laughs> that's what Isn't he thought I did. And I'm like, look, I, I didn't correct him. I'm like, I do clean toilets. This is what I see of the company. We had to get the office clean because we couldn't afford a cleaning crew at the time. Yeah, you do what you have to do. You that's do what right. you got to do. And if you find, if you find people that, pursue a passion. I, like I didn't mind doing the video editing work this weekend because I'm still, I'm in the learning phase when I get to, when it gets to be rote and it's like, yeah, leather and I'm going to be, all right, I can art source this and do whatever. But for me, this is still a, it's a hobby. Eventually would like it to become a full-time gig and, but I'm not there yet. So I've got to fund this out of my own pocket. I got to be a little discreet, but I'm enjoying just doing this, right? Just what you and I are doing. This is half the fun. It's talking to somebody that's energized by what they're doing. They're excited about it. They've made it work. And, you know, when I run across one of my favorite podcasts is a guy named Rich Font. And I found him like I found you. He put his first LinkedIn post and said, I just quit my full-time job and I'm going to be a full-time videographer. Wow. And I felt, I felt this passion for a while. Former military guy, this is what I'm going to do. He's very talented. So I reached out and said, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'd like to hear your story. So we had coffee 
put him on the podcast. He's been one of the best guests. He's so there was so much depth to his character, so yeah. much depth. So and he has no idea. I'm like, Rich, you, you got so much going on there. Yeah. So and he's he's talented and he's got he's he's growing his business and he's doing the grind like you. He said his wife, his his podcast is called There's No B Plan. Oh, dude, I preach that all the time. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no what ifs, there's no it's plan A and that's it, man. That's it. So when you what was it that when you, you, you got out of school, you're doing this corporate gig and it was in the recruiting space. At what point did you start to realize I've got, I've got another calling. I mean, what was it that triggered it? So actually it started for me very young, like, like 11 or 12. Ironically enough, I always had this vision of like, I, and I can't, it's hard to explain it, but I always had this feeling inside, like I was going to do something big in this world. I didn't know what it was going to be. And then I got into music and rapping and writing music and recording songs and I, it was my passion. I just did it all the time. And I got my friends into it and stuff, freestyle battle and everything, which is ironic because now you see some of my con like it all, the it all whole comes story together. plays together. Yeah. Full funny. circle. Well, don't understand. Like, oh, you do rap. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this for decades, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, but but then as I got older, you know, I, I was terrible in high school, got bad grades, got kicked out three times, went to three different high schools. I was, a I was just a terrible child. And then I was 19 and I got my stuff together. I went to school, graduated, had some jobs. And then it was probably, you know, I always, I guess I, I sort of succumbed to, I sort of came to this like idea that, that me being something special was going to be a CEO of a company that climbed the corporate ladder. And that was going to be my impact is that I was going to be this, you know, I sort of like thought that eventually when I got out of college, I'm like, all right, I'm in the real life now. And I guess I yeah. got to get a proper job and climb the ladder. And this is, and back then it wasn't like, this was 2011 you know, entrepreneurship wasn't like the cool thing, not like it is now, you know, over the last five years, maybe even 10 entrepreneurship has really gotten like where people feel like they can go do it back then. It was kind of like, if you were doing it back then, you were like a pioneer, right? You, you know, right. Yeah. I mean, back like then, everyone was talking about it. There was like business celebrities and stuff. Like, I mean, yeah. we had no running water. We were sitting around like gold right. corrals talking about how we're going to start up horse training businesses back then. It was crazy. So, so, you know, cap. so it's funny to go back like five years to go back five years, I was working on my, the corporate job. I had this idea that I was going to create, you know, this is way before LinkedIn and stuff. LinkedIn wasn't even a content platform at this point, but um, I started making these YouTube videos. And I'm like, I'm going to start making content. No clue what I was doing, uh, but I was going to make these YouTube videos where I was, uh, I was in the staff and recruiting industry. So I was going to put out videos that helped hiring managers, hire better people, uh, enrich their culture, you know, performance, all that stuff. It's things that were helpful that, that brought value to them. Now, it wasn't the entertaining and the well put together stuff I do today, obviously. It was just me literally filming and being myself and charismatic and stuff, but, but it wasn't like what I do now. I put out probably 10, maybe 15 videos mm -hmm. and a couple of people from my work, they popped up in their YouTube feed somehow. And I remember them saying, oh, Alex, they kind of made you a joke about it. You know, oh, Alex is doing YouTube videos and then, oh, really, why are you doing that? And I wasn't getting any results because I didn't know how to hell to market myself then, of course. Sure. And on YouTube, you can't just post a few videos and expect to go, you know, blow up, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole strategy. So, um, so I stopped doing it. I just figured, you know what, like maybe this isn't the right thing or right, the right time or whatever it is, but I never stopped believing that I was going to do something special in life. And then last year I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I've always had this burning desire to start my own company and I just got to go for it. And so I started posting videos on LinkedIn and, um, you know, they weren't great in the beginning, but I started slowly but surely unleashing my creative and, and who I was, my personality into my content. And I got good responses. People were like, well, this is funny, but I actually learned something too. Mm -hmm. And it was then that I was like, man, there's something to this. And then I realized customers were coming to me mm -hmm. as opposed to me having to chase down customers. Wow. I'm like, man, I got I to take this and run with this, man. And I'm so glad I did. I'm glad that I didn't give up because there's many times when it was just so hard. And I, and I, to be honest, I never thought about giving up because I was like plan A, you know, there's no plan mm -hmm. B. But there were many times where I was like, what the hell am I doing, man? And it's just all for, am I like, what am I doing? Am I wasting time? Is this really the right thing? Am I making a fool out of myself? You know, you just, I always talk about, I don't think you should doubt yourself, but it's normal to doubt the things that you're doing throughout the process. Yep. You know, you really have to, the people that make it believe in themselves wholeheartedly, and I, I think that's really not that you have the utmost confidence in everything you're doing. It's not about that. But deep down, you know that, hey, I will figure out a way to get this freaking thing done. Yes. You know, and that's what I've always believed is like, I don't care what happens. 
I don't care how much, how many mistakes I make, if I fail, whatever it is, I will find a way to make this thing successful. Now, again, I doubted a lot of things that I was doing. Should I do this? Is this really the right move right now? Is this, is my content? I don't know, you know, all the time. But I always believed at the end of the day that I would find a way to get it done. Yeah. People forget the iterative nature of this process. It, you, you've got to do your first one, right? Your first video is not going to be great. I, I can even remember, by the way, I've probably given a thousand speeches. I've probably recorded 500 videos with yeah. and without teleprompters. More of it's just completely ad hoc. I freaked out doing my episode zero. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote it out and sat down and I thought, God, this is going to be terrible. Yeah. And I, I did two takes, right? The first take I got done, I thought that's not me. Second take, I just turned everything off and said, just have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and by the way, here's what was interesting. As I was recording it, I started to smile. I was like, shit, this is fun. Like, I actually believe there's some value here that like, holy cow. And I had a, a guy just ping me this. He goes, I listened to your episode zero. I'm like, yeah, I want to reshoot it. He goes, don't, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Don't change it. So, you know, cause I've learned so much after I've done, you know, 20 episodes, I'm kind of like, holy cow, there's some nuances that he goes, don't change it. It's raw. It's natural. Yeah. Leave it alone. And the first time I saw one of your videos, it struck me that there's a tremendous level of confidence in your videos. And it's, by the way, I want to touch on this. It's so important because if you don't believe what you're doing, people won't believe it. 100%. And you fundamentally believe that I'm delivering you a quality piece of product right now and I'm having a good time doing it. Yes. People smell fear, man. Customers can smell fear. If they just don't buy, they're like, eh. Yeah, it's so true. It's one of the, you know, this actually where I was going to go next, ironically, but I think the confidence thing comes with repetition and comes with the practice and comes with the making mistakes and getting better and continuing to move forward and, and making commitments to yourself and following through on those commitments. And it's tough in the beginning because you yeah. don't have you don't have the confidence like you do when you've been successful at it and you've proven yourself and to other people, to your other clients that you can make them successful. I remember getting on calls when I first started the very first boot camp a few months back. And I was like, well, I did it for me. I should be able to do it for other people now. Like yeah. I know it works, you know, but it was still like, just, ah, oh, how am I going to run it? And what's the curriculum going to be? And what are the live sessions going to be like? And what am I going to, how am I going to, open this community up to where it's like a lively community and they feed off each other. And it's just like that. I remember being that person compared to who I am today where I could just hop on this and I'm like, Oh, I know this, this goes here that we do this, then this. And it's just like, I'm so, I thought about that literally before this podcast, I was on a call with a guy and I feel so confident on the calls now where I'm talking LinkedIn video marketing that I'm like, they could throw any question they want my sure. way. And I feel like I could answer it. No problem. I could go unprepared for any of these interviews. No problem. Cause I live it every day. Yeah. I live and breathe it. I'm not hiding it. Like I, anything you ask, I'm ready for it. I, this is what all I am obsessed with it. Everything I, I do every day is for this. You have to be the smartest person in the room on a topic. If that's your gig, you need to yeah. be. And by the way, if somebody catches you something you don't know, you go, huh, I don't know that one, but yeah. I'll, I'll get back to you and find out. It's great. I'd love to learn something new every yeah. day. Exactly. Yeah. When you, when you think about the process, I actually sat down and when I started filming, I wrote out a list of a hundred people I wanted on my podcast. I was number one, obviously. Oh, Alex. I mean, <laughs> before I even knew I wanted to do a podcast, I said, I got to get Alex. On the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think you start with some people, you know, you start in your safety zone. I started with some, yeah. I, I think, you know, Bob will be on the call. I can get this person on the call. And then I started yeah. reaching out to some people I didn't know, but here's what I did before I did that. I started going into their LinkedIn profiles, following their content, commenting on it with something of value, letting them know I cared about what they were doing. I thought it was important. And I nurtured that for a while. And then they would make one or two posts that just like, that's it. This is the one. And my intro is like, all right, it's time. You just did yep. something that I've got, we've got to share this story. We've got to get it out. Here's what I'm doing. And uh, the, uh, the approach of, of, you know, when you describe, all right, I, I, I struggled through high school. When I was 19, I got my shit together. And then when I was doing this job, I started shooting, doing some YouTube videos and realized I didn't understand the formulas, the success there. Yeah. But man, years later, I'm like, I got to go do this. Yes. And you just, so those, those eating crow moments when you were 19 that said, this probably isn't the path I need to be on. Yeah. Yeah. Right? What happened at 19 
when you ate some crow that said, dude, you've got to just get it together. What, what was there an event or you just woke up in the morning and said, all right, this is, it's time. Yeah. No, it, no, it really was more like a process. I don't remember it being like one single day. Okay. I just remember from 14 to 18, 19, I was just, oh, it was just always chaos, man. It was always chaos. Three different high schools was in and out of trouble with the law. My parents had issues with them. Um, it was just constant, man, constant, constant, constant. And, and again, I always had this voice inside of me that was like, you're, you're meant to do something bigger than this, you know? And, and, and I don't know what it is now. And you thought it was a rap to be a famous rapper, but it's not that, uh, maybe a famous LinkedIn rapper. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> by the way, I, I'm like, when I saw it, I'm like, damn, this kid's got skills. Yeah, man. But, um, but, but it was, you know, I think it was a combination of a couple things. One, I just think I hit a breaking point where I was like, I just can't, I, I just, when, when are you going to do it? You know, you, you keep looking in the mirror and you keep telling yourself that you're going to be this, this, you're going to make this impact on the world and you're going to do this great thing, but dude, you're full of shit. Like you're not living that. None of your actions map that you're going, you're going somewhere in life. Is that so when you decided point, to go to school? So at what point do you stop? And then, I, and then I had a really good, at the time, a girlfriend that just really challenged me, really pushed me. And I think that was a really, she was like the rock that I, cause I didn't have a good relationship with my parents, my brother you know, the friends I hung out with were all, they were all in trouble too. And they're all sure. I think most of them still aren't doing anything with their lives. But, um, so I had her, which was, which was really, it was a good support system for me. And, um, and yeah, I just was like, man, I just, it's time, it's time to go, man. I'm not a kid anymore. Like I need to move out. I need to get my stuff together. And I, my dad was like, he's old school. He's like, which I appreciate him for this. He's like, you know, either get a full-time job or you go to school one or the other. And so I got a full-time job for three months, I think it was. And then I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. I was like cleaning carpets at Stanley Steamer and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing this. So I, so I went to, I went to community college and, uh, and that started the whole, that started everything. And I was so far behind because I did so, so poorly in high school. I graduated as a super senior. I mean, I was just terrible. And um, I, I mean, it took me a year just to get caught up in terms of, I had just all these courses to make up from well, the lack of anything that I did in high school. Sure. And, but I was just bored in high school. I just didn't, I didn't, it didn't excite me. I wasn't passionate about it. I didn't put a lot of effort in. I'd skip class and I just it didn't have, I didn't have that spark, you know? And so, yeah, so that's, just, that's kind of the, the origin. Some of the most talented creative people out there uh, don't register in high school because their, their brains already three steps ahead of it. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, and it, it's, by the way, we can call it whatever we want to call it. Yeah. But, you know, we, we could have a separate discussion on education, right? And oh. you know, Dude, right. it's, so far broken. It, it, it's uh you know i'm an engineer i don't do i haven't done engineering for 35 years right yeah but i looked at college and i had this conversation with all my kids who are either through or in i've got one left in college use it as an experience to learn how to think that's like just just i don't care what you study i don't care what your major is but yeah. i want you to learn how to think and i want you to learn how to be organized get work done do a, teach you how to think though yeah well by the way i'm not talking about that think the, the thing I'm thinking is I've got to get this task done at this particular point in time. I've yeah. got to go learn something to do it. I've got to process yeah. it and digest process. something. That's it. Responsibility. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It just, it's, it's, it's nothing, it, it's nothing magical. I just want to know that you yeah. got through it. And you know, two of my kids are, they're D one athletes. So they're processing playing a sport and doing school. So it, it's a, that's, that's the grind. Yeah, man. Period. Oh, right. I can, I can imagine the whole, yeah, the whole school system needs a revamp. They need to teach, how to be successful at life. That should be the goal. It, really it the goal. is, you know, and uh, what I'm excited about hearing your story is there is so much there that you have to offer. And you, you're just, by the way, you're scratching the surface of what you're going to do on other platforms as well. Yeah. Cause dude, you can rap, right? You, I think somebody's going to call you up. You got your futures there. It is right. I mean, it could, it could come back and who knows what happens. Yeah. Who knows? But uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to obviously staying in touch and harassing you on all of your posts and Dude, please. I love the comments. snarky I love comments it. about your hoodies. I love it, man. You know, just so you, like I told you, my oldest son said, Dad, you could never be him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to try because yeah. Dad would embarrass the hell out of him if I did. Believe oh, me. man, get on there and start rapping, you know? It's cool yeah. when other people start doing it now, though, even though, you know. Never. There are, there are some people that have found their second calling and they didn't know they had it. Mm -hmm. So Alex, best of luck with the business and, you know, right. keep, keep adding value, creating content. And I'm just thrilled to be part of it. I appreciate you. All right. Thank thanks. You. We'll talk to you soon. 
Thanks for checking out Eating Crow here on YouTube. Drop a like and subscribe so you never miss a video.